You know, when you said this is uh, Joe Una, I really wanted to somehow like be like, and this is, you know, like a radio station, how they have like that really cheesy intro. <laughs> it's like, and this is pop. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> Get on with it. Just play, play, play the music that makes me feel good. There you um, go. I, see, I was hoping you'd go into like the, the super cheesy like uh, radio call sign. This is mm-hmm. AX2055. AX2055. Mm-hmm. Your source for PvP. And it has like all the effects on it. It's like there's glitches. There's like guitars playing. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. And you're like, okay, yeah. I, I, you have my attention, radio. You have my attention. Yeah, it's like just just play the same Justin Bieber song that I've listened to 17 times this week. Just get on with it already. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. This is interesting yeah. here. Uh, dropping the pylon down at the very bottom of the ramp. I mean, if Hero doesn't want to show these adepts, he doesn't have to at this point. So that's going to be a missed scout. Yeah, and those are just going to be canceled. Although the, the shades did come out. They might have seen just enough here. Um, but the ambiguity enough is going to be worth it here for hero as both players choosing to go in slightly different directions it is going to be four adepts on the map for hero it's going to be two and two two adepts two stalkers for joe yeah and the really interesting part about this is both players are actually going to stargate but hero has a massive advantage on that stargate timing because he went for the adepts they're much less gas intensive and so he had the 150 gas available sooner also means that his phoenix production is going to be a lot quicker and this might be a little bit of a trap here for joe if he does go into that oracle first and you suddenly fly across the map into the waiting arms of the three five phoenix that hero is going to build up at his base i mean this is already looking like a very very good start to this game for hero Man, losing one of those adepts, though, is a bit of a sore spot. And Joe Hoon actually forcing this pylon to finish as well. So get some valuable scouting information. Uh, almost got that adept shade out safely, but uh, might still make it happen as well. Uh, Oracle opening for Joe Hoon. I think you're absolutely right when you're talking about that trap just a little bit. Uh, I mean, the Phoenix are going to be sitting on the right-hand side here. There is going to be three of them in total. Oh, Joe rotates here at the last second. So this Oracle should be quickly dealt with, even though they are going to pass a little bit in the night here. Uh, it should be a limited amount of damage. Although uh, two seems to be a bit more than uh, Hero might have otherwise wanted to deal with. A nice little recall, though, is going to keep that Oracle alive. And Joe at least wins the mental battle. Yeah, I actually feel like Hero maybe could have gotten that Oracle if he had stuck around. But still, you know, this is the this is the great part for Hero about opening with the Phoenix is that now Joan I mean, was already preparing to transition out of Stargate, but you completely eliminate any more potential of that Oracle. Already got the three workers, which is obviously very, very nice. As, ooh, this is a massive Adept Shade here for Hero. He find his way into the main base. A good walk there with the pylon. Still going to be able to look for the one shots here on the probes. And now the Phoenix come in. The four of them are going to be able to get some pretty serious damage. But only four probes end up falling. And you commit four adepts for that. Overall, I mean, it doesn't seem very worthwhile. No, they didn't even get a really uh, meaningful pull. Joan with a great pylon block here at the uh, top left corner of his Sim City. So really doing a nice job of zoning that off and limiting the amount of damage that he ends up taking from all of these units. Now, the upside is that a lot of the Phoenix do manage to escape. In fact, I don't think, did any get picked off? No, um, none at all. So those are going to be able to continue offering additional uh ability or map control rather on the map and uh, i mean hopefully should be able to scout to uh, this cheeky little proxy here for joe Un. he's gonna get spicy here really quick i mean how many uh, warp gates are we at i mean we're only at two plus the proxy so this is going to be a very dedicated amount of pressure here for joe Un coming out it's not overwhelming but it's still something to be worried about yeah i mean you're also going to be having that observer on the way. Now, there is no blink for Joan, but he has a very large amount of stalkers. The one worry is that, hey, Hero is sitting back. He's going to have that blink available. And obviously, blink stalkers versus regular stalkers. That's not a fight that you like. These Phoenix still getting a ton of damage. Now, 13 probes haven't gone down. Hero realizes that, wait a second, you're not in your main. You're preparing to attack me. So, pulls the recall on to those Phoenix. Should have a shield battery there in the natural. I would like to see him... Potentially get one in the main, but of course, without that blink, it's going to be a lot harder for Joan to ferry up these stalkers. And there we go. Now Hero has confirmation that this is a very, very committed attack. 
should know that there's a proxy gateway here. And he's going to have to just try it and hold the front blink. Not done quite yet. So the one shot's going to come through for Joe Oon. The blink back is very, very good from Hero, though. Going to be able to try and dodge a lot of the damage. But still, I just think it's overwhelming numbers for the Alpha X Protoss working. I mean, only off of three gates, but just continually building stalkers throughout the early game. And that should be enough for him to snowball this to a victory. No blink. Doesn't matter. He's found 16 pros worth of damage. The natural is under threat. And, I mean, it doesn't matter how good your micro is with these blink stalkers. I don't think Hero's going to be able to pull this one back from the brink of defeat as all of his gateways go down. And, yeah, this is just looking like it's going to be a swift GG, Joon. A great timing attack. Yeah, look at the supply here, Titan. It plummets for Hero, and Joon's able to secure game number one in a very convincing fashion and this is alt rock <laughs> green day suddenly comes in and you're just like oh yeah okay okay can't do that too much <laughs> do that for too long and suddenly i can hear like the dmca machine like cranking in the background so uh, yeah it's like it's got the big red button on it that's, uh, that's like uh music detected and then it's like <laughs> words to life as like and it goes to copyright strike the channel that it hears the music on oh my gosh and then all of a sudden it's like getting a message from sushi and it's like hey sushi uh, or hey rush you need to chat really quick uh, were you playing copyrighted music it's like no but i was doing a great job of singing it wasn't it impressive Can't i was so on key <laughs> Oh man, oh man. Oh, that, man. And then you go on America's Got Talent, and you're like, here's my audition. And then, you know, I was so on key that I could get DMCA'd. Oh my gosh. And they're just like, it would be beautiful. That would be, that would actually be like an interesting story, I think. Uh, just to like follow the person who has uh, the most DMCA hits on like YouTube or Twitch or, <laughs> or Afrika TV because of uh, like pitch perfect uh, replications of popular music. That would actually be very interesting to follow. And then it would be interesting even more so to see how fast all three judges would like exit within just a <laughs> second. Like this is not, this isn't music. I can already hear Simon Cowell is like, this isn't music. This is, this is donkey noise. Noises and everyone in the audience, boo, boo. You're just making mouth sounds. Oh, there we go. I like that. I like that. Howie Mandel comes out of nowhere and tells him like an inspirational story about how his mom once worked for like the DMCA <laughs> country company and then just like slams the golden buzzer. He's all the way through to the finals. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, everyone else here, they say that you're out, but listen. I have a radio station. Boom! Hits it. <laughs> it's, it's like a golden buzzer. Everyone freaks out because they're told to by the directors in the crowd. And they're like, okay, cheer, cheer, cheer now. Come on, come on. And then everyone's like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, this is this is great reality TV. Um, gosh, I remember when, like, those those talent shows were massive. And they're still, I mean, pretty big. But there was, there was a while where, like, you would go on YouTube and that's all you would see. Well, if we were to get back to the game here, I think we'd have some interesting uh, things to talk about as both players deviating just a little bit in their opening build orders. I mean, Hero opting to go for a little bit more dedicated ground forces here, picking up a couple of sentries to go alongside some pretty stalker heavy opening. Also picking up a Twilight Council at a pretty early onset here. Uh, Joe Un, I think very nervous about a possible proxy from his opponent has been scouting out on the map like crazy. I mean, he's kind of wandered in a bunch of different directions uh, looking up north, but Hero just holding off at the very uh, late onset of the early game to drop that proxy pylon. It's very possible that Hero is thinking, you know what, Joan, anything you can do, I can do it better. And is going to come out with a little bit of aggression of his own. Yeah, we do have the Oracle, though, making its way across the map. But look at that. Three Stalkers and a few sentries already in the Mineral Line. Hero is prepared. He's made sure that he knows exactly what is going on in our own little talent show here of StarCraft 2 skills that we get to watch for the whole night, which is going to be oh so nice. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Hero <laughs> made it through the wall, but decided, hey, maybe I don't want to come on in there with all of Joe's units ready. It's just going to... Joe, this probe here is actually just... It's just the chattest probe. It says, listen, I could wall this off, but I'm not going to because I know you're not going to complete the shade. 
Yeah, it's just it's like the biggest bluff calling that uh, we've ever seen. Oh, that's actually going to be a good use of the Oracle. We'll pick off one of those or uh, those adepts. Does finally get that picked before the shade is allowed to complete. So that will at least help because that limits the damage potential. Two adepts, uh, one shot, a probe. But of of course, if you can do your math on the fly, one going to take two shots so a little less lethal but uh, I, I think it's interesting here that this pylon in the top left hasn't been fully utilized and heroes going for a third nexus here a little bit a little bit of plays here from both players yeah this is interesting from here of course I think in the end that proxy pylon is of course to try and throw off your opponent we see this happen all the time in high level pvp where you just place a pylon on the map because you know that your opponent is counting them that's how, in the early game, how good these players are and how much they know the matchup is that you can tell, all right, here's how many pylons you're supposed to have at this many minutes through the game. And so if Joan had managed to dive into the natural and seen, wait a second, you only have four pylons, where's your extra one? And then that might cause Joan to panic a little bit more. And I think, honestly, Joan is actually going to be preparing for another attack here. It's Immortals. He already has two out blinkers on the way. Additional gateways and this proxy gateway. It's a little bit farther away than you'd probably like. And ooh, Hero Stalker is not going to be on the right path to scout it out. He's got to be very, very careful because you're taking a third Nexus into a player who looks like they really want to get aggressive very, very shortly. The Adept, though, makes it into the main. And that's massive. Scouts out the upgrade. Scouts out is going to see the entire army of Jo'un. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's going to pull that army all the way to the back of the base as well. So that does slow things down for Jo'un. But once again, like you said, it does show his hand just a little bit. It's so many stalkers. And it's not that much of an investment into the economy. But to, to be really frank here, I mean, Hero isn't doing a whole lot of economic buildup himself. He is getting his own immortal count boosted up. He's got one done, second one on the way. And we're starting to see a production spike here as well with three additional gateways on the production tab as well as charge finishing up so i wouldn't be surprised to see this pylon start to become a location where charged up zealot can come streaming on in from the top left hand corner of the map but joon is now shown his hand the stalker is going to be a great scout here and this is now going to be an important hold here for hero Yes, here we go. Immediately the blink's going to come on through. Hero is ahead in supply, and that's very, very nice force fields to keep out the Immortals of Joan. And mind you, right now, Joan is Joan just finished his third base. Hero is up six workers, and Joan just has to pull back. He says, okay, Hero's ready. He, you know, he scouted this out. He knows exactly what's coming. He had charge slots ready, had the blink stalkers as well, and Joan can't come in. And suddenly that is, I mean, a terrible... I mean, loss for Joan, where you're committing a lot to these immortals, to wanting to get aggressive, and it just doesn't work out now with the gateway is going to be unpowered. And Hero, I mean, he's got to be very, very happy with his position, with how well he was able just to prepare for this, get up his third base comfortably, and now com go completely unpunished. Now the proxy has been dismantled here for Joon. He's having to fall back. What's out here at the third base location? The shield battery not quite done just yet, but I think it will be done in time for this push. A nice little warp prism ad adding additional stalkers to this fight. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Hero just charge on into the natural. Why fight at the third base when you can just start to get onto the crux of oh. the production? But it does seem like it's going to be a big engagement here at the third base location. Giant blink forward to take out the shield battery overcharge. Those immortals starting to work away on these units as they are allowed to thin out the blink stalkers to the left hand side, cutting off the reinforcements and protecting those immortals, letting them live up to their name. And a hero secures game number two on the backs of some nice macro and a good amount of game sense to time things out and catch Joan while he was slacking. From Alpha X, he is your red Protoss. His name is Joan. And in the top left, it's our blue Protoss player. One win away from advancing on to the second season of Code S here in 2022. Dragon Phoenix Gaming. This is Hero. Or maybe I should, like, emphasize the, the capitalize. It's Hero. I don't know. Hero.
Uh, as as we would do when he makes a really cool play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this just reminded me. Um, have you ever? And of course, I'm gonna preface this with saying, obviously, anybody who sits down and actually tries to cast a game in front of any live audience, uh, massive props to them. It's not something that's easy to do to tar to like articulate thoughts about a video game while stuff is happening while considering the game. like all that. Um, but sometimes it is. Sometimes you see those that one clip of like a caster who just does something a little bit awkward or a little bit off time and it's really hard not to cringe. <laughs> oh man, I see I work with teenagers, so like I maybe I'm just like numb to the cringe because I know mm. exactly what you're talking about, but I, I can usually only just like like giggle. Because usually my exposure to, to like cringy moments is like 14 or 15 year old teenagers who are just like trying to do their best and I'm, I I have like the best intentions in mind like ah oh, man they're giving it their go but mm -hmm. gosh the number of times that I think I've been in that position too I, I'm sure there's like a great compilation or cringe palation if you will of, uh, yeah. of embarrassing rushy moments where uh, he, oh my gosh the, the, the caster made a mistake he said something wrong get him <laughs> I mean, I, I know there's plenty of times where I've said very uh, <laughs> off-color things. Um, most of them about siege tanks and the fact <laughs> that they can't uh, fire uh, against units that are close up to them. But, yeah, I, I find that interesting. And, of course, again, you know, when casting, it, it's an art form, really. You know, it's a skill that develops. And so you know, everyone has those moments. It happens. You know, I had plenty of them. I mean, if I go back and I watch my first time casting StarCraft 2, um, which is whew, a long time ago. That was six years ago, maybe? Oh, no, gosh. maybe maybe, maybe four, four years ago, four or five years ago or so, um, when I was just, you know, it, it, it was a different time, uh, <laughs> to say the least. And I definitely did not have the enthusiasm or the articulation that I do now, which makes me so glad that I have continued to do it because... Honestly, we wouldn't want to listen to <laughs> to little 15, 16 year old Phoenix Davis Bailey sitting there trying to run a community tournament and also cast it himself. It was, yeah. Oh my gosh, I did, your your name is just like delightfully long, and it, and it's just filled with like so many cool names. Like Phoenix, like what what an amazing first name. Absolutely enjoy that. Uh, should make a note that uh, Joan decided to be a little bit aggressive here uh, with his opening units. Really didn't uh, trade anything out. Did pick off one probe, but I think that was just uh, the scout that was here out at the front. So uh, a bit of a, a slow start here for both of our players. Um, finding a Twilight Council for Hero on his side of the map does uh, counterbalance the Oracle opening for Joe Un. So once again, both players uh, choosing slightly different paths to success here. I, I, I'm curious to see if Joe Un's going to be able to make any of this work uh, alongside the opening that Hero had of Oracle and Sentry. But it seems like one work is going to be all he gets, at least for right now. Yeah, and I gotta say, I, I do like um, that Hero was able to scout out that Oracle with the Hallucinated Phoenix. Means he's gonna be able to really mitigate most of the damage from this unit. The Blink, though, actually starts up quite late for him. I think probably didn't have the minerals for it um, with the pro production in time. And so that means that even though he had the much faster Twilight Council, the upgrade difference, the timing difference on this Blink upgrade, is not going to be that big. It's probably going to be around 20 seconds or so. As, oh, Adept's actually shading on in. The Oracle does get sniped. We're going to start to see these probe kills rack up. Seven have fallen so far, and only seven will fall. It's obviously a pretty big blow there to Hero, but you clean up all the Adepts. You clean up the Oracle as well. It means there's not really going to be any more map pressure for Jo'un for at least a little while. I mean, you, you say only seven. But I'm thinking, like, man, seven for the for the cost of four adepts is not a, a horrible trade. Not to mention that uh, both of the oh, that's actually a good pick off there. Uh, both of the sentries went down at the natural mm. as well. So decent amount of investment for Joe Un, but it did result in some decent exchange, and we're getting a dark shrine out of it all. Let's go. <laughs> We love the Dark Shrine. As you know, we're just mixing it up a little bit here. Hero is going to try and press forward. Has that blink ready for his stalkers. I do like Joan here. 
just hallucinating a few stalkers, you know, says, hey, listen, if you want to target fire the ones at the front, guess what? They're fake, and look at that! Manages to absorb one stalker volley already, and now suddenly the numbers aren't enough to get these one shots through with the shield battery overcharge hero. is going to just have to blink out, and a, I mean, perfectly done defense there for Joe Un. Make sure that that stalker count can't snowball out of control. Now, uh, if the hero was looking, he did see the Dark Shrine. It's just a matter of whether or not he clicked on it. It is in a position where it could just be misconstrued as another shield battery or even like a photon cannon. But I, I have a feeling that he's probably in a position where he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's got an observer on the way. So the DTs are not going to be nearly as spooky and surprising as they otherwise normally would be, especially since uh, Blink DT, or excuse me, Blink Stalkers are going to be able to retreat back home. So uh, the, the defense is going to be well informed here for Hero. He's got his first observer in a pretty advantageous location i don't think joe's going to be able to sneak anything by him at this point at least not without being seen and yeah there goes the vision immediately blink stalker is going to be able to deal with that not even enough time for joe to deal some additional damage on the rebound yep as ooh, stalkers don't go down very very nice there for the red protoss the dark templar he just kind of walks around and says, listen, I have a cool stick thing with a sword on the end. I know it's not very logical, but I'm going to show it off and then not do anything with it. But the third base <laughs> is on the way for Joe and is, again, quite far behind that of Hero, who's going to work on his own Dark Shrine. Of course, most likely this is going to be for the um, Archons. You will have to know that your opponent is going to have Observers out by the time. I mean, it's, it's timing, so it is more so a macro Dark Shrine than anything. And how often do you say that, a macro Dark Shrine? Um, only in PvP. And maybe maybe PvZ as you get to the late game. But Forge upgrades coming through. Charge as well for both of these. Or not for both these players, actually. Only for Hero. Because look at that. It's Robotics Bay for Jaun, which most likely is going to mean Disruptors. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that as a response. If you've got an opponent that's going to have a large amount of standard ground army having that disruptor play could be very very advantageous for joe Un. i mean his uh, control is rather impeccable and would not be surprising to see him successful with that but it is only one uh, robotics bay currently on the map but that is a big pickoff oh. here intercepted warp prism with that small hit squad of stalkers that takes a ton of teeth out of the harassment of heroes. So now Joe knows that something's coming across the map here. He can continue to keep his army in an advantageous position and find opportunities to stay aggressive here. But a nice little uh, grab on the observer. Uh, the hero observer stays alive. Joe Un's going to have to remake his at this point because there are DTs on both sides of the fence now. And, uh, and Joe Un's gonna be careful that he doesn't let a couple slip by. Absolutely, and I gotta say, I mean, it was actually wasn't just stalkers in there. There was an immortal that went down, and Hero was already out 12 supply. Imagine how much more dangerous that attack would have been with an immortal. And the back at the back of it, you know, that could have been a position where a Hero was able to commit on in and try and find a really convincing fight. But because it was sniped, he then has to play a bit safer. Doesn't want to try and force the issue. Especially since, you know, this is game three. Winner of this is going to qualify. And if you if you are decide to be that aggressive, you're running the risk of suddenly being the one that makes that massive mistake. And then you have to go down to the losers finals. And then eh, that's another best of three that you have to play. Yeah, and it, losing momentum can be a very difficult thing to deal with, especially if you fight really hard in the top side of the bracket and then have to catch somebody who is surging from the low sides, had a chance to already win a, at least one series on the head. Oh, he could catch another warp prism. Oh. That's going to be the second warp prism that gets picked off. A great interception here by Joe Un. But yeah, that's two warp prisms with valuable units. Now, there was no immortal this time around, but still, uh, again, we were just talking about momentum in terms of series. Uh, momentum in, in terms of just gameplay as well. You start to lose so many of those uh, advantageous opportunities to advance forward, and that can really catch you off guard. The Disruptor trying to secure a retreat, and it will make that happen right now, but it seems like Hero wants to force the issue. 
Yeah, trying to look for this round there. Wasn't able to quite get it. There are three disruptors out, so you have to be so, so careful. That's going to be a lot of zealots going down. And we all know that Jones' disruptor control is something else. That is really what, I mean, in his PvPs, he was known for. And so Hero's going into it, and he's going with a massive ground army. And that's just a risky, risky play to make. Because these stalkers, these zealots, if you just get caught out a little bit, you're going to end up losing a lot. It's, oh my, that... Oh, Joan I mean, Disruptors. Joan Disruptors. They hit different. <laughs> well, these are actually very exposed Immortals. I wouldn't be surprised to see a recall go down. Yeah, those are going to be able to escape out. But the main army here on the left-hand side becoming an issue. The Disruptors getting caught out front, making it difficult for Joe Un to actually capitalize on their damage output here. But plenty of Blink Stalkers alongside a warpable pylon makes this at least a recoverable situation for Joe Un. He's going to try and tackle some of these uh, Stalkers in the retreat. That is going to leave one Immortal out in the open. Is it going to get picked up? It does get picked up by the Warp Prism, so that will rescue them, at least for the meantime, one finally does go down. Joon does have an advantage here, but here comes the reinforcements of Hero, and that should send the Red Protoss player packing. Unless he wants to fight in this joke, Disruptor trying to get an advantageous position on an aggressive Hero, but Hero doesn't overextend, at least not at this point, and is able to continue fighting here. But look at this top right-hand corner. That's going to be a Nexus that might go unscouted, especially oh. since the fourth base is going to get attacked, but both players are going to be swinging at the same time yeah this is very very interesting we're gonna see i think both nexuses end up going down it looks like hero might actually just try and go for the third he says listen you're gonna hit my fourth i don't care i'm gonna just get the base that is more important as that's a recall it's being popped disruptor shots go out they don't find the best connections the immortals here firing away on stalkers hero is down in supply but trying to find an advantageous trade as he's bringing in the units from the flank as well another disruptor shot going to be able to find massive amounts of value and jode he's hitting the third as well he's going to be able to knock that down there's no units for hero to try and counter that piece everything for him is across the map right now Oh, now there's a uh, Warping of Zealots is going to be able to push things back and away. And these Stalkers are still finding additional damage across the map as well. So that means Joe Un's got an opportunity to knock down this third base. And that would be a second base that has been taken down here for the Red Protoss player. Good Disruptor shots, but amazing splits oh. here on those Immortals. They are living up to their name entirely. But now it starts to finally look like Joe Un is going to have to sacrifice this third base oh, here. Oh, I love uh, that. Does come at the third base cost of Hero, but this is just so much damage, so much DPS. The DTs coming in to help. There's no observers here on this side of the map. Titan, Joe Un's going to be able to push this back. Yeah, I mean, it was massive. Joe Un sees that there's no observers and just warps on in the Dark Templars. And now look at this disruptor shot. Manages to get another Immortal. Two of them fall, but the supplies are so low both players are somehow set to 35 workers or so as both have lost around 40. june i mean taking the slightly better trades of course he has those disruptors and they're so cost efficient but hero this is what he does best he is scrappy he wins these games by slim margins and we're suddenly only two supply apart look at june had that thoroughly in control but oh he's snipe an immortal but hero just fighting it out so so well yeah, I mean, this is. Th I think this ended up being a much better exchange for Joe Un, taking down two Nexi in a return. Uh, yes, he lost the units at the third base and had to rebuild some workers, but keeping that Nexus is incredibly important. So it's going to come down to how Hero can utilize this base in the top right, because as it sits right Ooh. now, Joe Un not aware of its existence at this current outset here dt's fighting dt's always feels like uh, a bit of an interesting gambit between the two players but uh, both players have access to detection so it's not going to be anything that tries to swing the battle but i think an interesting position nonetheless rushy i think i don't think not only has joe not been able to scout this ninja nexus i think hero has forgotten about it as there is no I mean, he's, he's retaking a third next. He spent 400 minerals on that. When he has a perfectly healthy one up here that he can just recall probes to. And that just means that Hero, he's not going to have as large of an army. Because he spent so much money on this Nexus, and it's just going to get canceled anyway as his stalkers are trying to blink back. They're going to have to blink onto the high ground just to save three of them. 
as ooh, the Archons are here, but they're caught out. It's just the Archons, and they do not fight well alone. And I think that Hero might have just blundered here a little bit too much as Joe Un gets the cancel on the Nexus. And again, I mean, I don't understand why Hero built that Nexus when you can just recall to that other one that you have in the top right. You have the extra probes, a nice blink back to, do or to dodge the Disruptor shot, but it is now such an uphill battle for Hero. I mean, he's got all of these workers perfectly grouped up. Uh, one pushback for Joe Un and all of these workers could go be productive elsewhere, but nice, a good slowdown on this observer. That means that uh, it is going to be a lack of vision here for the blue Protoss player as both units are being so scrappy, but Hero uh. is plummeting in supply. It's unfortunate for Hero. He's fought so hard here, but the production is just not there. The mining is just not present any longer and now additional workers end up going down here drops below 20 supply and you're absolutely right the base in the top right doesn't matter anymore joe un advances to season two of code s 2-1 over his opponent he sends hero down to the lower side of the bracket